we want to take the demand curve and the supply curve and put them together to create a model of the market. So we know the demand curve is downward sloping. We know the supply curve is normally upward sloping. Let us see how this helps us. Suppose we pick a price arbitrarily. For some reason, we notice that the price in the market is $690 a pound on one particular Saturday. The information we have gathered that is embodied in the demand and supply curves imply that at that price, the vendors are bringing only 55 pounds of carrots to market, whereas buyers are showing up wanting to buy 65 pounds of carrots. So the sellers are going to quickly run out of carrots and buyers are going to be unsatisfied. What is going to happen is that there will be a tendency, at least by next market day, for the price to rise. That excess demand creates an incentive for sellers to raise their prices. Because at $690 a pound, they sold off all of their 55 pounds of carrots. Had they raised their, had they raised their prices higher, and indeed that might start to happen even before the end of that same market day, all the carrots would still get sold off, but at a higher price. So the sellers are better off by raising their price. So when there is excess demand, prices will tend to rise automatically. Suppose, let's start at a different point, that the price in the market was $730 a pound. At that price, sellers would be bringing 65 pounds of carrots to market, but there would only be buyers for 55 pounds, which means as we start to get to the end of the market day, sellers are going to realize that they are not going to sell off all of their carrots. That is going to create a tendency for prices to fall. Sellers rather get rid of their produce at some price rather than have it spoiled. Even if it's not a product that is subject to spoilage, in the literal sense, it could be hardware, it could be an electronic product, it could be a piece of lumber that has some durability. The fact is that the longer it stays in inventory, is the less valuable it becomes, the less people are willing to buy it. So while not with the same urgency as perishable goods, like agricultural produce, the fact is that unsold inventory creates an incentive for price to fall. And so if we have a situation where there is excess supply at the current price, prices will begin to fall. So if prices are below, if prices are where there is excess demand, it will tend to rise. If prices are where there is excess supply, price will tend to fall. The only price at which there is no tendency for it to move, either rise or fall, is where the demand and supply curves cross. That is the only price where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. In this example, at $710 a pound. That is called the equilibrium. Borrowing a concept from physics, equilibrium is a state of rest. There's no tendency for the price to change, and therefore the market is in a stable situation. It's also referred to more descriptively as the market clearing price. Because at that price, since quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied, the market clears, meaning there are no unsatisfied buyers and there are no sellers left with produce. So in a market, prices will tend to rise or fall except at the market clearing price it will tend to fall towards the market, clear, market clearing price 
or rise towards the market clearing price. So this is our model of the market. It captures the tendencies that we have discussed in particular, that prices tend to rise or fall, except at the market clearing price. Let us see if we can apply this simple model to throw some insight on actual situations. Kidney crisis. Physician calls for donations as supplies fall short. Well, there's a waiting list of persons with kidney failure for donated organs. Let us see if we can model this peculiar situation. One, hesita one hesitates to call it a market, but a market it is. In most countries, it is quite rightly illegal to buy or sell human organs. So the price is zero. And at the price of zero, there are many who are demanding kidneys and very few who are willing to supply them. So that excess demand is what the physician was referring to in the news item of supplies falling short. This is merely to illustrate, of course, how we can represent that situation in the market model. It is not an argument in favor of allowing markets to determine who gets organs. So let's be very clear on that. But what it does tell us, and the purpose of this example is that Whenever we see evidence of a demand and supply mismatch, it is an indication that we are at a disequilibrium price. We are at a price that does not clear the market. So when you look around you and you see any evidence of this demand and supply mismatch, shortages, long lines, it is telling you something about price. Let us apply our market model in a different way. Let us, let us play with it. What is the effect of a drought on the market for carrots? Now, the way a market works, most people come across it so naturally in their experience that you can probably answer this question without us using the model. But it's still a good idea for us to use the model to derive the result to get some practice to work with the model. What is the effect of a drought on the market for carrots? Well, it's a three step procedure. The first step is which curve is that going to affect? Any, any situation you posit that you want to analyze, step one is which curve is affected. In this case, it's a supply curve. The shortage of rainfall, the shortage of irrigation is going to reduce the yield of those who grow carrots. So at every old price, fewer carrots are going to be supplied. The supply curve shifts to the left. That's the second step. Having identified which curve is affected, you have to work out in what direction. Does the curve shift to the left or shift to the right? Step one, which curve? Step two, in what direction? Step three, what therefore happens to price? Well, what happens to price is that we now have, with the shift to the left of the supply curve, we now have an excess demand for carrots at the old price. So what's going to happen? Well, sellers are going to realize that it is in their interest to charge a higher price and still get everything they have sold. At the same time, so that is, that is impacting the shortage by increasing the quantity supplied. But the shortage also gets dealt with on the demand side. 
because as price up, some people who previously were willing to buy carrots are no longer willing to do so, or at least no longer willing to buy as many carrots. So quantity demanded also falls. So the rise in quantity supplied and the fall in quantity demanded causes the market to clear as price rises. So we end up with, as a result of the drought, a fall in the amount of carrots traded and a rise in the price. So we have used our model of the market to work out what is the effect of a drought on the quantity of carrots traded and on the price. So that's how we use the model. Here's another example. It seems that in India, domestic fish prices have increased on soaring demand. Why has demand soared? Let's read. Fish prices across India are on the rise as the domestic market is growing at a rate of 30%. So we know quantity is increasing. Consumption of fish is increasing significantly due to two factors, lifestyle changes and a higher cost of meat. In addition, the perception of fish as healthy food with cholesterol lowering capability is also a major factor. Okay, so we know the outcomes. It says that the market is growing and prices are rising. And they have pointed to a couple of factors that might be causing those changes. We want to see if we can use the model to capture all of that. So here's the market for fish in India. It tells us two things are happening. People are pursuing healthier lifestyles because fish is a healthier food than meat. Also, the alternative to fish, which is meat, is becoming more expensive. So people are shifting from meat to fish as consumers, both because meat is more expensive, has gotten more expensive, and because they are pursuing a healthier lifestyle. So both of those factors increase the demand for fish. Both of those factors shift the demand curve to the right. The new equilibrium after the demand curve shifts to the right represents a 30% increase in the size of the market, in the quantity traded, as well as a significant increase in price. So we have used our model to make sense of what we just read about the market for fish in India. Many countries are legalizing the use of small amounts of marijuana. It's a limited de decriminalization because most of these countries are limiting the quantity you can have, you can possess to relatively small amounts, 30 grams in the case of Trinidad and Tobago here. Anything, any quantity larger than that, it remains illegal for you to possess or grow. So what this tells you is that it is the, cons it is the consumer it is the retail consumer of marijuana who is being freed from criminal prosecution, but to grow and distribute marijuana at a commercial scale remains illegal. So the question we want to address is what is the effect on the market of this decriminal decriminalization of consumption by individuals 
versus the legalization of growing and distributing at commercial scale. Well, the first question to ask, applying our three-step procedure, is when possessing and using small amounts is decriminalized, which curve is affected? Well, the answer is the demand curve. Because it is the users, those small amounts are for individual use. So the demand curve is affected. In which direction? Well, in the direction of people are now going to be more willing to consume marijuana because to the extent that it's it being a, a criminal activity was a deterrent, that deterrent has now been taken away. It's also worth asking the question, how big a deterrent was this? How many people do you know refuse to smoke yandra just because it is illegal? Probably a small amount. So to whatever extent the demand curve is going to shift, it is going to shift to the right, but only by a small amount. So our model tells us that the effects of decriminalizing possessing and using a small amount of Gyandra would have on the market would be perhaps a small increase in quantity traded and an equally small increase in price. Consistent with that, very few of the countries that have decriminalized the use of small amounts of marijuana have observed a significant increase in price. But bear in mind that decriminalization affects only the demand side of the market. A few countries have allowed production and distribution at commercial scale. Uruguay has removed all restrictions on marijuana. Anybody can grow any quantity, distribute any quantity. You know, marijuana is treated like tobacco, it's treated like carrots. If the countries that have only decriminalized now go on to complete legalization, that's going to affect the supply side. That's going to make supply more efficient. So the supply curve is going to shift to the right. And given that the enforcement of restrictions in any case mostly affected growing and distribution, that is going to be a much more significant shift to the right than we saw with decriminalization on the demand side. When that takes place, that shift to the right of the supply curve is going to push price in the opposite direction. The shift of the demand curve to the right would tend to increase price and only by a small amount. The shift of the supply curve is going to push price down and also increase the market size. So while both decriminalization of use and legalization of growth and distribution are going to increase the size of the market, they have opposite effects on price. Just an exercise for us to see how useful the market model is. But we have modeled what we know about how markets operate. And we conclude that price will tend to rise or fall until the market clears.